Hello everyone, Kerry the Craft here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with um, a hop really, and a hop basically is, okay, as you know I designed for Pia Marta Studio in Texas, USA, um, they have a Facebook group called the Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artist Group, obviously the link will be in the box below, um, you'll need to answer three questions to join the group, simple simple questions to answer, the group's full of supportive, creative people who are just having fun with art, and I love it there. And what they do is they have certain challenges and colour combos and swaps and things they do every month. And one of the things they do every month is called the hop. Now, the hop is basically there is a theme each month, and then you either do it as a non-YouTuber or as a YouTuber. I'm going to join as a YouTuber this month. And what you do is you make a tutorial... Um, of whatever length is needed for the skills you're sharing and then you make maybe a little maybe five to ten minute preview video then all of the preview videos are linked together and launched in one day in a chain sequence and then after you've watched the preview you may want to go oh I want to see the whole tutorial on that one and then you can choose to see the whole tutorial um, I usually post mine the next day so the theme this month was, and I've written it down because it confused the heck out of me, I guess Texan into British didn't work. It was See Me Yak. Nah. Okay, let's explain how my brain processed this. See, I can understand that. Ocean, lovely. Me, that's me, myself, and I. Yak. Yak. Well, to me, that the spelling should be a K and a yak is an animal. But then when I look at See Me Yak, it's slang, but yak to me is to vomit or to throw up. Hmm, gross, I thought. So I thought, wait a minute, see me throw up? So any, anyway, I just got really confused about this. And Mariah, who set this set this up, had a great laugh thinking, what the hell are they talking about? And apparently I wasn't the only one confused. And what it should be, see me, you see, as in Y-A, and C is separate. See me, you see? So when I'm starting any project that's new to me or a little different, I tend to not waste my supplies on doing it full scale. I work on small scale. So um, I made this one for a starter. It was, I tend to, when I'm doing techniques, I make them on these cards. How big is this? I know someone's going to ask me what size is this. I can't find a ruler anywhere it would help. Right, this is five and a half by three and three quarters and I and these are like tourist cards and I have a box of them I, I use them for this so I will make up a tester thing put a little eyelet through it and then I hang them on a piece of wire and then I've got them as a reference this was my first attempt at this technique um, and I was playing around with how to do it I really like this but I wanted to go with ocean and this looked more um, industrial to me so I stepped away it's mainly the grid and the copper that made it look to me more industrial. I then went to this which was much more abstract which I actually liked a lot more. Um, I used gold, I'm going to explain how I did this. I used crackle paint in it as well and to me this had much more movement in it and I think what I've learned between the two of them is I like this but I want more white in this. So I think when I do the bigger version, which is what I'm about to do today, sorry, I forgot to tell you the size of this. That's five by five by seven. That's the size I make my cards. Um, and that's just a, a canvas on a board. And I keep these things. I mean, I love that. That's lovely. I don't know which way it should be up. I, I don't mind. Maybe in future it'll get embellished further. It might just get signed and dated by me and it is what it is. So to stay within the C theme, I wanted it a little less intense around the outside, but I wanted some splashes of white in there as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, this video is going to have to be done in sections. Can I tell you now, this technique which I'm doing here takes at least a day to dry. So, and the crackle I usually leave overnight as well. So, I have a canvas, a mounted canvas. This used to be um, a collage, we can see. It was a collage piece of tissue paper. It never really worked for me. It's been in my stack of canvases forever and I thought I'm gonna recycle it. So all I've done is I've taken some book page. Um, I kept with a fairly white book page 
and I um, put them all over here using um, Liquitex Basics Acrylic Matte Medium Gel and I did that and wrapped it all the way around to the back so it sealed off nicely. Um, the size of this is nine and a half, I would say it's probably about 10 or 12, yeah nine and a half by 12. Now I'm not overly fussed on the orientation, I will decide the orientation when it's finished because some decisions don't need to be made until they need to be made. So um, over the top of this however I then use clear gesso. Now my clear gesso has a texture to it, you can hear that. Um, I did that because I thought if I'm going to use pastes and paints and stuff on here I want them to grip and also I wanted some sort of barrier between wet mediums and believe me there's going to be wet mediums on here and the paper behind it so so anyway let's get on with this so now as you heard me say I've not done this before except on the small versions um, I'm going to name and tell you everything I'm doing as far as I possibly can name and tell you everything I'm doing um, but forgive me if I miss something because as I'm working I could easily miss something out so I've got a piece of carnival tissue paper here. Now carnival tissue paper is a water resistant tissue paper. Um, I buy it here in the UK. I think it might even be manufactured here in the UK. It's not the cheapest tissue paper in the world. Um, however, it comes in enormous sheets. So if you bought say 100 sheets, you could probably make it into 400 sheets once you've cut it into quarters because it's a big, big bulk. So, and I bought Oh, I think I bought mine about a year and a half ago, my bundle, and I'm still not even halfway through it. So I thought I wanted to use this. Now, I'm sure someone else has done it in other ways. Um, as I said, I did play a bit, but this is how it worked for me. Now, you'll notice I've got a messy mat down. That's definitely on purpose because this is a messy process. So I'm going to take my mat gel medium and I'm going to squeeze it onto here. Now, as you can hear, this container is almost out and I have a brand new one next to me. Now... I am, um, uh, I'll cut this tube later and get the excess out. Right, I have a lot on here and I want a lot on here for what I want to do. I'm going to, I've probably got far too much on here to be honest, but let's just go with the flow because I'm not sure. Let's put some of that on the mat because I will need it later anyway. So what I wanted to do, and this is why it had to be a wet mead, a wet, uh, a water resistant tissue paper because I couldn't have done this with gift wrap. I'm not saying you can't do it with gift wrap, I just know I couldn't have coped with it with gift wrap. So as you can see I've got quite a thick coating on there. So I've got that on there and I'm going to flip this over onto my art piece. And I want quite a bit underneath it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it and work it into a shape in which I want. Now, I kind of want a sort of sweeping shape. Now, I don't mind if there's bubbles under it because as it's all coated with matte gel medium, it will eventually set up. Now, it could also be that I can add another piece to the side if I want, like under here has not got anything on it. Uh, I don't actually know what shape I want just yet. I also don't want it to be so perfectly centered. I've got other stuff going on here. Sorry about the knocking guys. It is just what it is. It's the way this is working today. So I can pick this up and move it around. So as you can see I can really play with this on, on the surface um, because it's wet, wet water resistant tissue paper. It's meant to get wet. Okay, that's kind of working for me now, a little bit more. A little bit of this over the top, just so it'll stick to itself. Not liking that bit stuck up there. So, but as I said, I'm sure others have done something with different media. I even played around with the idea, should I do this with fabric? And I decided not to in the end. I decided I liked the fact that I could get a certain fineness out of this. Okay, that's kind of working for me. I do have other pieces here, and I think what I want to do is I want to add, add something in this corner that almost goes round the corner, or round the edge anyway. 
my shot near enough. So I'm just going to come in and put this at the top here so that I can I can muss this up as it goes around the corner is what I'm trying to say. It's a little hard when I'm trying to concentrate on this and concentration and speaking isn't always the easiest of jobs to do but you can see where I'm going with it and I do apologize if you can't see certain sections I will try and keep it within shot but I'm always playing with the thing that do I keep it in shot or do I um, do I keep it close up or do I do it from far away and then people can't see it right I'm going to grab a pile of books and I'm going to put the books underneath this because I don't want it sticking down to my table however I do want even shot near enough I do want to be able to play with this a little more right down here needs something as well I quite like this where this is going and believe it or not I need more of the matte gel medium you can now see why this takes a day or so to dry so I don't normally get this this vigorous with matte gel medium so it I've, I've had to be a little brave with this one guys it's just I knew in my mind what I wanted I just couldn't quite foresee how I could make it work until I went I'm just gonna go for it and and therein lies a lesson for most of us I think you know what just go for it um, I did the little ones purely because I wanted to see the effect and the only way I could see the effect was to just get messy with it. Well, I think I want to thicken this up up here a bit. Now, um, I have to be a bit careful with my hands um, because my skin reacts to stuff. So I would say just be aware that if this is the sort of thing that's going to aggravate any skin condition, then put some gloves on. Um, I've done this enough times to know that as soon as I've done this, if I go and wash my hands, I'm actually okay. Um, but I must admit, when I did the first one, I tried it with gloves. And for me, it didn't work with gloves. I, I really struggled. I think I want just down here to come, not so much to a point, but to an end. So, right. I'm just going to use my brush just to get stuff in here now I'm periodically pulling it up a bit because I want I want it not to be flat I want this to represent the surface of the ocean or my perception of the surface of the ocean anyway and believe me I've spent enough time on the ocean next to the ocean in the ocean to know to know enough about the ocean to know how I'm feeling about how I want this to look so right, I'm just blending out my fingers around the edge we're going to be using lots of other mediums as well now obviously for me this is a mixed media piece um, I, I did say I recently did my studio tour and one of the inspirational things I took out of my own studio tour was I want more of my own art on the walls I want I want stuff that I want to see on my walls and so I thought, right, let's get making some art that's not a journal, that's not, not a digital, let's make something. So right, I think I could play with this for hours, but I'm going to stop playing with this and just, there comes a point when I'm trying to make it perfect, and we all know I struggle with perfectionism, but you know what, there isn't perfect, so I need to just let that go. Right, I've got a sledge roller on my brush, so I might as well just put it on here because one of the next stages is I'm going to get some white gesso on here because what I want to do is I want to knock this into the background. Right, I'm going to pause you for two seconds because I need to wash this brush. These brushes are not something I want um, getting clogged up with a whole load of matte medium because um, I love these brushes, but they're not cheap. Back in two seconds. So here I am back again. My brushes are good clean. I'm not gonna not gonna ruin a brush for a piece of art. Well, not this one anyway. Right. Um, I'm just gonna get a regular paintbrush, and I've, I just I don't like it looking that square on the edge. 
and just because a paintbrush will give me more of a randomness than my fingers. So I haven't really worked out. I mean, I worked from that corner to this, but it doesn't mean it won't end up in this orientation or it won't end up in that orientation. Let's push that down a bit. I want that a bit flatter. Um, that's kind of more of what I was feeling. Um, but we'll see. We, we won't make that decision. I'm not going to make a decision on something because that may restrict how I actually view the creativity of it. So, right, next stage is there's plenty of matte medium on here to move stuff around. I'm just going to smooth it up. Brush marks are obviously not going to be an issue. However, I just want to make sure that I haven't got so many on here, it's distracting. Right, this will take, as I said, at least overnight to dry. But what I'm going to do is I can work on the other stuff within it at this point. A little bit of something stuck in there that I don't want stuck. There you go, you're gone. Right, and as you can see, I've taken it around the edge of the board or the edge of the canvas. Okay, let's resize up this center. Um, I like to keep things raised slightly off the surface because if anything does drip or go around the edge of the canvas, I don't want things sticking sticking below. So I completely oh, I'm always stuck to something. Right, I think I'm completely in shot here. Right. I'm now going to use white gesso. Um, this is my local white gesso. It's an inexpensive white gesso. Um, I'm probably going to put this on with a brush and then move it around my fingers, to be honest. I just want to empty this last pot. This pot has been very good to me, to be honest. I've, it's lasted quite a long time. I just want to get this on here. I can empty out this tub then. So, yes. Um, Interesting topic this. Um, as most of you know, I have spent quite a bit of time at sea. I used to be an entertainer on the cruise ship companies. Um, so I have spent a long time at sea um, and very much, much appreciate um, the ocean's majesty, its power, its, its killer instincts. It's, there's lots and lots of things about the ocean that I hugely, hugely respect. Um, I have seen some amazing stuff on, on the ocean, next to the ocean, throughout my time with the ocean. I've seen some incredibly scary things as well. Um, many years ago, and it was many, many years ago, um, there was one that really brought it all home to me and I was so I'm just painting around the edges here with the white because I don't necessarily need it to be completely white on the edges I'm quite pleased I'm using the old gesso actually because it's it's thicker it's almost feeling like um a texture paste um uh, what was I going to say yeah um there was an incident that happened many years ago when I was working on a cruise ship I used to work for Princess Cruises for about 14 years I think I took a gap in the middle. I can't quite remember at the moment. Um, and there was this one time we were in reasonably rough seas and and the ship started to turn. An announcement was made that we were answering an SOS, um, which is both scary and, and exciting because how often do you get to do something like that? And And it turns out that a smaller cruise ship was actually... In, in distress. Now, um, it's it's a whole thing thinking that the ocean is dangerous and it's a whole nother thing seeing the ocean being dangerous. And by that, what I mean is we went to this smaller cruise ship that was apparently taking on water. I don't know how many passengers it was. It was certainly not a huge cruise line. It was one of the smaller private cruise ships. Um, and what was happening is it was getting more and more waterlogged. And this must have been about, oh, I'd say about 10 o'clock at night. Because I remember it was dark and we were looking over at the cruise ship. Um, because it wasn't that far away from us. We, we were literally, we had our lifeboats in the water and we were out um, getting passengers from their ship to our ship. Because they were at the 
point where they were abandoning ship. And um, so we were all on deck there and the crew was there helping. Anyone who could help, like medical staff, anything like that was there. There weren't injuries that I was aware of, but there, there was definitely people in shock. And what happened was um, right there in front of our eyes, the cruise ship sunk. It was on the surface and then all of a sudden it started tilting over to one side and then within a few minutes it was it was just like one of those scenes you see from a disaster movie um literally you saw the lights flickering under the surface and then the surface just went calm over the top of it and the entire cruise ship was gone and when you're on a cruise ship nowhere near land it's it's very chilling to think Oh my God, that could have been us. And it could well have been us. Um, I don't know. So for me, that was that was one of those moments when I thought, you know what? I really, I mean, I'd always respected the ocean anyway, but I, I really was like the power of the ocean, the power of nature to just snuff something out like a cruise ship. Um, pretty enormous, really. Pretty, pretty enormous. Right, what I'm doing is I'm kind of smoothing this out because I'm going to do some... Um, I'm going to scratch the surface and remove sections, but what I'd quite like to have is a reasonable smooth surface to start with. Now, I say smooth, I'm aiming for a textured piece. I mean, absolutely aiming for a textured piece. Um, I think when I did my smaller versions of this, I, I wasn't brave enough with the texturizing, and I think the texture is what's needed. Now, after this is fully dried, I will be adding texture paste to it. I'll be using crackle paste. I think I've got grit paste. I want this to be texturally interesting. So this isn't dirty, it's just a stained cloth. So I'm on here now, and I'm gonna come in. Let's get a bit of paper to wipe this off. Huh? And I'm going to use my palette knife and I'm going to take this back in areas to the stuff behind it. And as I said, I'm just, I'm going by instinct with this, guys. I just... Can you see? Yes, you can see. Feels a bit like my cake decorating days with a palette knife in my hand. Okay, I don't mind that. I like that better than what I did over here, actually. Let's see if I can get some of this back out of here. So I'm trying to give the illusion of um, constant movement because um, the ocean never, never rests. It, even when it's as calm as a mill pond, there's always something going on. There just always is. And for me, I, I, I want that interpreted within this piece. So, so I think I'm getting there. Now this, as I said, is gonna take some serious drying and I don't really want to hit it with a hairdryer um, because that's not what I want to do with it. I'm wondering actually whether I should add some grit paste in that now. Right, that needs to be just wrapped up in this so it doesn't dry out totally. I think I might come in with some grit paste now because why am I waiting for it to dry to be able to wet it again? So right this is grit paste. It's um, part of the Ranger um, collection. This is very old. I'm hoping it's still going to be usable. Mm, yes it kind of is. It probably just needs a spritz of water to be honest to bring it back. Let's do that. Sometimes if something dries out, all it really does need is to be reintroduced to water. Right. So grit paste, it's, it feels almost as if it's got sand within it. Although I'm not sure that it does. I mean, obviously I'm not privy to the the ingredients other than probably what's is there anything written on here 
yeah but not not so much that I can read um, so again I'm coming in I'm hoping to make these little raised areas almost like um, foam so sea foam Ooh, that could have been something I could have done with this what was... no I just had a thought I thought oh because I've got a whole jar of sea glass I collect sea glass and I love sea glass I never do anything with it except put it in a big jar and look at it but that's fine with me it's something beautiful to be looked at and I thought maybe I could embed some sea glass into this but as it wasn't in the original plan and I'm not really sure I haven't thought through how I would do that I don't think I'm going to do it I'm going to stay as I am here so just getting stuff in so um the text in the background was purely there because um if I didn't have enough texture in this, but there was some text page showing, then to me that was that was enough to give visual texture. So now I think I'm going to be using a combination of acrylics and acrylic inks on this piece when it's done. Um, that's what I did with the smaller versions. So, and I don't see why I should deviate from that, to be honest. So I'm literally just, well, as you can see, I'm paddling this stuff on. No pun intended about oceans and things like that. Um, so just to round off the story of the cruise ship that we saw sink, there was no loss of life. There was no injury. We got everybody off. They they stayed with us until we got to our next port of call. All the passengers, the passengers on board and the crew sacrificed um, some of their cabins and doubled up with relatives and friends so that these people could actually have somewhere to sleep in comfort. We obviously had enough food. There's never a cruise ship that I know that doesn't have enough food. Um, the crew were amazing they they chipped in and sorted stuff out passengers were there helping as well it it was a it was a wonderful thing to see humanity raising its head because sometimes we forget that humans can be human um so yes it was wonderful i think that's enough grit paste in there i'm liking that that's looking very 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 movement to me. I'm hoping this dries as well as it looks now. It's also really weird to be working with non-colour. Now I know that later on there's going to be a whole sledge load of colour on this, probably all within the same family of colours, but it's it's interesting to just be working in white. I think I'm going to really love this once this is done. think that's my still in shot I'm trying to stay in shot and move it around so I can use it right I think we're going to go away from the grit paste now what I'm going to do is I tend to keep a piece of plastic over whatever mixed media products I've got like um, texture paste grit paste um, crackle paste things like that. and I have a way of doing it which is I scrape everything down as far as I can. I then take a bit of, this is cling film to us here in the UK. Um, in America, it may be Ceram Wrap or, uh, that was a brand name I know, but I tend to just take this, I'll put this over the top of the product and then I'll push down so it almost encapsulates it. Because even if I put a lid on this, I still have trapped all that air in there and that's what will dry product out. I then usually fold the top over again just to give myself a double barrier and then I screw the lid on. Um, when you reckon this jar is probably about two years old, this grit paste, and it's still going well, that's not a problem. Right, um, I want to clean this off a bit. Actually, I'm getting sticky here. Let me pause you and I'll come back in a second because then I want to put some crackle paste on here. Okay, that feels better. That's nice and clean now. Um, 
and that saves me having to chip it off later because if you don't clean your your equipment as you're using it with some of these pastes when it sets it's set like cement you will you will never get it back again okay i'm really loving that i'm hoping the camera is picking up how textural this is now i am trying to get stuff on the side but i don't want the sides to basically be too much more than just a little bit colored because I don't I don't know where this is going to be hanging so I don't really want to scar anything on walls right I'm changing from the pointy palette knife because I wanted to get into these little nooks and crannies said he just fiddling one more time can't leave it alone can you Griffiths and I've gone into more of a flat spatula type this is literally it used to be a small palette knife I use for cake decorating I have several of them and I'll, I like them for paint as well as I did for um, my cake decorating skills so I'm now going to go to the Ranger Texture Paste Opaque Crackle. Now, there are lots and lots and lots of different crackle pastes out there on the market. I've only tried a few. I really like this one. Um, this, is, this is what it gives you when it dries. Now, it'll depend on how thin you smear it. So if you look here... That area must have been where the palette knife was wiping off. So the thinner the layer, the finer the crackle. This area was obviously quite thick. And you can see it has more crevasses within it. Um, my experience, and it's my experience, and I'm, I'm not speaking for any other artist or anyone else who uses texture base here, because I'm sure it's a, it's a personal thing. Crackle paste works best for me if I apply it and let it dry completely and utterly naturally. If I try and hurry it up with um, a hairdryer or a heat gun, it doesn't crack in the same way. I've been led to believe that the way it works is the paste as it dries, so let's say this is a side view of it, um, the top section will dry at a different rate of the stuff below, which is where it then starts pulling apart and cracking. If you hurry it up so it all dries at the same time, it doesn't have that natural ability to split and crack. So I do not use a heat gun or anything on it. I literally let it do its thing. I'm going to work in this area and then that area up there. Again, I've had I've already taken the plastic off this one. I do like this one. It's a nice creamy consistency. Um, I don't need a huge amount of it, but I do want some on here. And I'm just going to come in. Now, I don't know how it's going to react if I mix it with the texture paste. Um, and that doesn't bother me. That really doesn't bother me. It'll, it'll be visually something, let's put it that way. It would be nice if it did crack down here, because that's where I'd like it to be cracking. Now, what I'm going to do is I think, and I didn't do this with the first one, but I think I might do it with this one. I'm going to come in with the store card and see if I can smooth this out a bit, because I think I'm going to get a better effect of the crackle if it's a little smoother down here. Okay, I think, think that's going to give me more of what I'm looking for. I don't think I want to put it on that thick, that it's completely and utterly smooth, but I do want to put it on smoother. And I think if I follow, actually that's an idea. Yeah, that might work. Just trying to emulate some sort of movement within it. Hopefully that isn't too. I might come back in with some of the grip paste in a minute. I'm, I'm unsure that I've done the right thing down here. Okay, up here, let's have another go. And I don't need it to look the same on both sides. And I don't mind that this is slightly lumpy. It's about texture. A lump is a texture. Yeah, I like coming into the studio in the morning after I've used um, grip um, texture paste and actually see what the effect is because it does happen quite slowly. 
and it is fascinating that it happens at all. And then to come back in and see that it's happened. Now it could be once this is all done and dried that I come in and I add more grit paste or I work something else into this. I'm unsure at the moment. Which I'm liking the smoother version more. I think I was too literal down here. I think I'm trying to create waves when I shouldn't be trying to create waves. I think that'll be enough of the crackle. Is there anywhere else I can just put a little patch of it here or there? just to carry something through. Sorry, I know I'm spinning this round a bit, but I'm hopefully not making anyone ill. It's sometimes it's just these little tiny patches when, when you're adding stuff on, you're like, oh, look at that little bit there where it just caught the light, or that little bit there where it just caught something else. Now, I don't think I can get crackle into this. I'd, I'd be quite surprised if I could. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit there. I think that'll do. Oh, actually, I don't think that bit will do there. I'll do a little bit more there. There's nothing like your fingers, is there? Good grief. I know someone's going to say, Kerry, what happened to you? What happened to the perfectionist in you? There are times when you just have to accept that perfect is never going to be option. And please, what will perfect look like in this scenario? I couldn't tell you. So we're not even going to bother with it. I'm just going to create. And, and that is the absolute joy of being creative is just those moments. And for me, they're not as frequent as I would like, but those moments where you just do it. You, you, you just create. Um, and I like that. I'm wondering whether I, I need to put the grit paste back in here. Uh, that looks too much of a clean line there for me. Uh, I'd like to come back in. I'll use the pointy nose one so I can actually get in there. I, I, liked, I liked the idea that that could potentially turn into foam. It's going to be interesting to see how all of these pastes work together. I haven't really mixed pastes. It didn't come out. This down here definitely needs a little something. So hopefully this this little experiment play will be entertaining. Let's put it that way. I was going to say interest, but I'm it's, watching someone experiment with something to me is always interesting. Um, whether you, it inspires anyone to have a go, that is completely up to the individual. Um, is it my intent to inspire someone to have a go? Not really, I'm just sharing, as it says in my tagline, I'm sharing my creative journey, my exploration into the world of my own creativity, and I'm just taking you along for the journey, and, and without your help and support, I probably wouldn't be as brave as I am, but thank you. Well, for someone who's just going to put one to two little more pieces in, I've sort of out over gilded the lily, but I actually think that's wonderful. Right, let me just put the lid back on here. I need to press that down in contact. That over the top. Screw the lid on. Right, so let's see where we've got to with this. Let me just 
The book pages are all over the place at the moment because I've been spinning this round. I do have a Lazy Susan somewhere. I should really have just pulled the Lazy Susan in, shouldn't I? Okay. I'm unsure which direction this is going in, as I said, but I'm okay with whichever direction it goes in eventually. Um, it will tell me. Let's clear that out of the way up there. Give this a bit of a wipe off because this mat is dirty enough as it is. Okay. I kind of am loving where that's going and I know I'm supposed to be adding colour to this, but I'm actually quite tempted not to add colour to this. I'm, I'm liking this. I think this is beautiful. Right. This is going to take at least a day for this section to dry. This will be dry by overnight and have cracked. This, um, I don't know how long I'm going to have to get it dry. I must admit, I, I can't remember what the date is even at the moment. Um, but I know there's a deadline by which Mariah needs the video links. So I will aim to get that sorted. So I would say this is almost exactly 24 hours later. As you can see, the crackle paint crackled stunningly. And this is... Can you hear that? It's dry. I mean, if I press on it, I think there's still some dampness underneath. But I'm not going to spend time drying it anymore because the next part of the process is just making it wet again. Now, what I did do is I put, put elastic band around the book so they don't move. And I put this on here and I put it on a couple of non-slip mats because I'm going to want to move this around as I work. Let's just do this so it's this way on. Um, so I'm not struggling to find which one to turn around. Um, purely because I'm going to be working with a lot of wet mediums. Um, I'm going to be moving it around. I'm going to lift it, move it up. I've got a very big roll of kitchen towel here because let's let's not be shy about this. It's going to get messy. My hands will probably end up turquoise or black or gold or God knows what. And there's going to be liquid everywhere. This is the exciting bit that I love about doing this sort of thing. Um, and this could also be the, where it goes hideously wrong or it goes hideously right. But it's all about applying and taking off, applying and taking off, applying and taking off. And that, and you will see that as I go along. So um, I do not have a huge amount of inks. This, this is all I own as far as inks. So I've got a white that I'm going to use. I've got um, pearlescent. These are liquid acrylics. Um, I've got this green that I think would be a nice undertone for the sea. I've got this one by Ranger, which is called Stream, which I really love. And I've got this one, which would be the main turquoise deep. Um, these, these here are pretty much picket fence and speckled egg. I might pull them in for some splashing effects later on. I'm sure. So basically, I'm just going to be brave. And I said, we're going to make a mess. Um, but that's just the way it is. So first of all, I'm going to put some green up. My aim is to make these one kind of mottle shade, the darker piece down the middle, white within it somewhere in the parameters as if it's foam. And then after all this is done, I'll probably then catch some of the tops with gold, which is what I did here, which I really loved that gold. And for me, that was like um, the crests of waves catching sunset. So, yeah, it's a bit out of this world, but you know what I'm like. Um, and I need to remember that it's not a literal translation of something. It's an interpretation in an abstract form, which is exactly what I want. So I've just got some water in a mist bottle and I'm just going to do these outer areas. And I've got this is Vivid Lime Green by Liquitex. It's an acrylic ink and I'm literally going to put some of this in here. Now, yes, it looks hideously green. It looks way, way Kermitville, but that's okay. I just want something in there that is a different, a different quality. And now if I spray it quickly, it's not going to set up on me. There's little bits I might knock around to let them run. But not a huge amount. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to blot off anything that's still sat on the surface. Because at this point it's going to look very much like grass. But my aim is, as I said, 
to eventually this will be almost a pale blue because I'm going to work with most of the teal and the turquoise through the centre and, and this darker stream colour. But the process of spritzing with water and moving it around means it will seep into the outer edges. So we're not going to use the green again. That, that's fine. That was my intent. Um, I think I want to come through the middle now with a little bit, a little bit, with some of the turquoise deep. Now, this is going to be one of the main players in this. So I want to make sure that it's on, on the playing field to start with. Now, um, some of you can probably say, Kerry, why haven't you put that in the spray bottle? Um, I probably could, but... And then I'd have to put it back in one of these, and I'm not very good with a spray bottle. I'm fine with an airbrush, but not a spray bottle. So got that on there, and now I'm going to give this a relatively good splat with water. And I want to make sure that I can move it around a bit. So sorry if it goes into shade and comes out of shade. I just need to get it moving in a direction. There you go, liking that. Now I'm going to come in now with the pearlized version. Like with most of the art you see me do, for me this is all about layers. So I come in and I'm going to put this where the white is this time. Now I am by no means um, excellent at this. I just do what I do and I love it. Um, and I do watch other artists work and they do phenomenal work. And what I would say is look around, check out who's out there. Again, I'm going to repeat the process of wetting it down to get it all moving around. And as I said, all I'm trying to do is to build up tones, values, layers, all and everything of the above. I'm going to be pulling some of this back off, as I've said, just to give different values. I am not, however, going to be drying it in between stages, or it's not my intent to anyway, unless something calls out that it really, honestly, truly needs to be dried. I also haven't decided um, in which orientation this is going to be finished, so I'm going to equally turn. Now I know you can't see this very well. I'm turning it so that the colours run in every single direction I've got. It doesn't take much for it to be soaked up. So you can see we're getting that movement through there, loving that. Now I'm going to come in with a bit of the picket fence, which is a distress stain. Now this one I do have a spray of. Obviously not a great spray. I think this one's a little bit on the old side, to be honest. I've got a brand new one. As you can see, I do use this one occasionally. No, you're not playing, playing nice today. Yeah. So I'm just going to come in. And as you can see, as soon as it hits the rest of the colours, it disperses. And that's exactly what I'm aiming for. And yes, I will have stuff all over the place. It'll probably be my curtains and everything when I finish this. But you know, that's fine. So we're getting there with the movement I want. Now I'm conscious I've got green and green, which is what's making this look a little bit bizarre at this point. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in, I'm going to bring in a brush, not a good quality brush, just, just a brush. And I'm going to work on, that's my turning point. I'm going to work on these areas here and I'm going to work a little more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm working with a little more purpose. I intend pushing this colour around with a brush. And then potentially lifting it back off. I don't mind if it goes down the sides. In fact, going on the sides would actually be a good thing because when you, you view this from the side, um, you then wouldn't have just written word on the side. So I'm going to come in. Where's that white gone again? 
I'm just going to tap this on there. So as you can see, it's all becoming part of the overall look now. I'm going to let that sit while I do the other corner, and then I will come back and actually pick that up. Just letting it absorb a little bit into um, the matrix that's there, the, the underpinning cracks that are in this, which are the exciting bit, to be honest with you. Now, if I do feel that it's getting too wet, I could come in with a hairdryer. As I said, I don't, I don't intend to do that, but I, I'm always willing to leave things as an option. Again, I'm going to bring that down the side. Might as well get the sides done while I'm here. I think I want to spin this around again this way. I quite like this to almost run into that. So I don't really, you can see it moving there. See, I'm getting that lovely fluidity going on through there. And I'm going to let that sit for a second, put the paintbrush to one side and get myself ready for the next bit. Right. Now, as I said, I'm going to come in, I'm going to blot. And I want a blot to lift off patches of this area. See, I want, I want that sort of... You know when you're in the Mediterranean or you're in, in a place that's got beautiful... That bit really doesn't look right there. Sorry. I'm going to give this a little bit of a haircut. This fold just looks... It's going to be a future problem, I can see. Um, anyway, you know when you're in the Mediterranean or you're in the Bahamas or you're somewhere near the ocean and you know that bit that's just just on the beach near the surface, um, just on the beach, not near the surface, what I'm trying to say, on the beach near the sand where the water is running, running really shallow because the waves are coming in and out, that's the sort of feel I'm going for in there. Bring the other one. So it's got the light because I need to have some form of light in this to balance the dark. Right, how are we doing in this? I'm going to put some more white into this. And I know you're all saying, Kerry, why don't you just use the other spray if it works? Um, yes, but I don't actually want it to be blocking this out. Now once once this is dried a little bit, once I've finished with all the different shades of this turquoise in it, I am going to come in with white paint, like white acrylic paint, hence this, and put in areas where I foresee there being like sea foam. So, okay, loving that so far. Now I'm not dabbing out the middle as you may have seen. And that's because I want the intensity in there. Right, I'm going with the alcohol ink called Stream. Now my intent is to put quite a bit of that up here and then run it down. So. Yes, I'll be wearing this color for a couple of days, I should imagine. So see if I can do it so you can see it. I think I need more liquid in there. Go on, off you go. Try to get it so you can see it. Right. I'm going to try and spritz it while it's on this angle. There you go, it's beginning to come down here. Actually, before it does that, I need to put something there to capture all of this or it's going to start flooding over my 
work surface right. I'm going to tip this up really vertically for a second just because anything is puddled or pooled in here I want to make sure it's it's out of there to be able to move down and I'm thinking I want more of this again. Now um, inks will dry lighter and we know that I mean that's just a bit of a given and in my experience they dry lighter anyway. Let's see how we get this. There it's beginning to run. Now I've got this running I'm going to try and get it to run outward slightly as well. So I don't know that this is the best thing to be filming but if I didn't film it I know I'd get a lot of grief from you guys going Kerry you should have filmed it. Well this is me filming it and this is these are the problems you get when you film. I'm liking that. I'd like this to be a little more dispersed around the edges. I don't know why this little bit down here thinks it's really special. It's not got any green on it. Turquoise should I say. Right now I'm going to bring in the picket fence that does spray. And hopefully it does still spray. Come on, I cleaned you before we started. There you go. Right, I'm going to spray from this angle across. I'm going to spray from this angle across. Now this should give me the ability to move the white around. And I'm looking for a lovely blend between the two colour families. I think this needs a bit more here. I can see I'm going to have a major clean up in my studio after this. Got to keep this moving. I remember when I first started doing mixed media, I was always fascinated by people who did this sort of stuff. The sort of spray and move and all of that lot. And I, I tried to emulate it because it fascinated me. But I must admit, um, my biggest hold up was I was just too cautious. Um, it's, it's, what's that phrase, go big or go home? You, you seriously, with this sort of technique, you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. So if you've got spare stuff, swamping around and then you know what that is literally what this is I mean it can be um, in my opinion a little bit wasteful on product but you know what the the effects you get at the end of it for me are fabulous I mean look at that so far oh, look at my hands for a start Just give this a bit of a rub under there Not averse to using the tools that I was given at birth. I think I'm not a million miles away from loving that. I think I'm going to come in with one blast of this and I'm going to aim from this point upwards. That works for me. A little bit more in here. Now once this piece is finished and dried, um, I am going to um, spray it with a varnish and I'm going to spray it with a satin, um, not, not a gloss, because I don't really like shiny shiny art. Unless it, it's chrome work or it's meant to be shiny shiny art. Um, I'm not a lover of having, having artwork on the walls that I need to, so I'm really tipping this up now to get this to run down. Um, I don't like having artwork on the walls that I have to stand at a funny angle at to see if I can actually view it. So 
So you're just getting rid of all of this excess now. I think I'm okay with that. I think, I think guys, you may have to wait a little while for this to um, dry before I can do the, the gold work on it. But I'm kind of loving that. I'm kind of wanting some more white up here though. So that's just... So run the white into and then pull the white back out of. And remember guys, this is just the way I'm doing it. I don't know whether this is the right way. I don't know whether this is the wrong way. But in my opinion, art is art and there's no real rules to art. There is just creativity. Actually, there is one rule. The rule is don't get it on my carpet. Right. So I'm run my fingers around the side of this just to get all of that colour evenly spread around the sides. I don't mind if it looks a bit peculiar on the sides. It's, it's all about this for me. So I think the next stage is I'm going to have to let this dry. So here we are. It's definitely dry to the touch. I would imagine it's going to need at least another overnight to get fully dry again. But I just want to keep on working at it. Now, I wanted, as I said in the beginning, along these margins here to put white as if it's almost like the cresting of waves. So what I'm going to do is I've just got a little bit of packing foam here. And I'm going to use an acrylic white paint, which I know is um, opaque. Um, I know that it's it may pick up a little bit of the colour. However, I just want to come in and just on the margin, just add patches as if this is a, a, a current of the ocean coming through. I don't I don't want to turn it all white, but I want to catch bits of it. The only trouble with doing something like this is knowing when when is enough enough. And, and that's that's an ongoing problem for me, full stop. When is enough enough? So. But I think I've got a handle on on sort of the feel I'm looking for this. Catch a little bit more down there as if as if the current of the ocean is just breaking through. Now, I will also be doing white splatters on this. Um, and I will probably be doing gold splatters as well. A little bit there just looks like. I still haven't decided which orientation this is going to be in. And maybe it'll be one of those things that is never actually decided. Maybe one day I'll hang it vertically. The next day I'll hang it horizontally. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I currently I have no no feelings of an orientation for this. Right, a little bit more in there. I feel. I don't want to be seen to be outlining it. I I want you know sometimes when you look over the side of the boat or you you see the ocean there's those little bits of little bit of foam that's just caught here and there and everywhere right that's that's enough of that now I want to come in now I want to do the white splatters so I'm going to turn this on an angle because I want to come in this direction so literally I'm just taking the same white paint I don't need a huge amount we're not we're not doing a whole splatter everything you can see look. Um, a little bit of water just to make it fluid enough to splat. And I like to do a bit of a tester. Yes, I can do that. Maybe just a touch more water. Um, 
a lot of this stuff is purely done by feel, guys. Um, I can't explain how I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. I think that's enough. Right, bit of a clean up on the old brush. I thought I had a bottle of water here somewhere. It just I always keep a jar of water on my desk because I don't actually have access to water in this room. It's a converted bedroom, so of course there wouldn't be a sink in it. Well, there wouldn't be a sink in this one, let's put it that way. There may be a sink in some of the bedrooms maybe you've stayed in. I mean, I've stayed in hotels that have got four showers in the corner of the room, which is always a bit disconcerting because it's not even like it's an ensuite. It's literally a shower cubicle stuck in the corner of the room. I remember I was teaching once in Milan, Italy, and I was shown into this room and it smelled of damp and it was able to turn around and saw the shower in the corner of the room. No extractor fan, no nothing. It was just the way it was. I was a bit taken aback, should I say. Right. Um, do I want to paint or do I want to splatter first? Maybe, maybe paint. Right, I'm going to use this gold, um, iridescent precious gold by Pebio. Um, it's, it's the most opaque that I have, let's put it that way. And I'm just going to come in, I'm going to load my brush. Now if we look at the, the tester I did, it wasn't everywhere. It was just a little hint of it here or there. And what my vision for this is, you know, when the sun is setting, it just catches certain areas. So I'm keeping the brush really flat and just letting the brush decide which bits are going to be captured as, as the sun would in real terms. A little bit more over there. I think I'd like to widen this out a bit at the top. Again, instinct only, guys. I'm wondering whether I want to put some black splatters in this. Maybe not. Maybe my instinct is wrong in that. It, it, I mean, I'd like it for the drama of it, but... I don't see black in the ocean. I actually see all the way down to Prussian blue, royal blue, navy blue, all the blues put together basically. Um, so yeah, maybe black is the wrong idea for that. Right, just mixing some gold up with some water over here, just so it's, it's of a splatter consistency. Turning it around again because I want the direction of the splatters to be in that way. Little bit of a tester. Oh, that's nowhere near soft enough. I was wise to do a tester. Mm, kind of. I need to take some off this brush. I've got too much on the brush to start with. I don't want heavy splatters. I just want as if as if the sunlight setting sun has actually caught um, sea foam. Could have done without you dobbing down there. But you know what? That is what it is. This gold is drying out really, really quickly. Well, I wish that dob wasn't there, so let's see whether we can do something about that. Which hopefully I can. Now I did toy with um Putting, what am I trying to say? I did toy with putting uh, a word on here or words because I like to do that. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of white 
just to mask that area that I didn't really want that colour. And I think I think I want to say I'm done. Um, and if I'm not done, I should be done because I'm, I'm, I can feel myself beginning to tamper with it now. Right. I'm going to let this dry overnight now and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to spray it with a satin varnish. And this is the satin varnish I bought today. I was down at the art store. Um, it says it's for acrylic paints and everything. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to build up some layers of varnish on here just so that they fully dried and then the whole thing is sealed off. Don't want that bit of gold there. So, so there you go. So um, for you again, it's two seconds. For me, it's going to be a little bit longer than that because this needs to thoroughly dry because I don't want to seal moisture into it. OK, see you in a few, guys. And it's done and it's finished and it's sealed. So the evolution of it was, this was my first tester. That's where this idea started from. This is what it became. And then eventually this is what I ended up with. My aim was to create a textual piece that reminded me emotionally of what the ocean meant to me. Um, it's not a depiction in real life. It's meant to be abstract. Um, if there's something I really love about this piece, besides the depth of colour and the gold representing sunrise or sunlight like glinting on the tops of waves, the little bits of here where I remember being in, in the Mediterranean and being in the Caribbean and seeing when the water's just really fine over the sand and there's that breaking up of the foam and just everything about this is beautiful but the one thing I really love is it's non-directional this is the way I sort of feel it should be viewed but if I just turn it like this it's a cascading river if if I turn it this way I mean it's just whatever it needs to be whatever you feel it wants to be so when I come to display this for me I, I love this. It's just, this reminds me of when you look at the ocean and, and you look down into it, you see everything from the shallows to the depths, the mystery of, of the ocean. We still have not explored it all. We don't know what it holds. And this, I am absolutely loving this. So hope you love this as much as I do. It's going to have pride of place in my studio. It's definitely going on the wall. I'm hoping with sunlight that this doesn't fade, but I will always have photographs of it and I'll always have this video of it. And I have um, the satin varnish I used on it has UV protection. So I'm hoping to have saved that. And it was a good exercise. It was a wonderful exercise, actually. So basically that's me done guys so remember i'm going to put a link to things like the makers of mixed media art and artist group which is down below um you'll need to answer three questions to become part of that group of artists crafters beautifully supportive teachers and everyone on there will give you constructive and supportive advice when asked and and they're just wonderful and i love it and i love being part of that group so please pop across and join it. Also, um, PM Artist Studio have a YouTube channel and they actually um, do lives three times a week with, uh, often enough there's four, sometimes there's one extra on a Monday, but go across there, it's two hours of arty fun, lots of advice, a chance to ask experts in the stream exactly the questions you want answered. There, There's at least 100 to 150 people in every stream. Therefore, you've got all of that pool of knowledge to, to pull in from. So go across, click on them, subscribe, put the notifications on. I'd love to see that channel grow really quickly because it's such a beautiful, supportive community. And enough of all me gushing. So um, I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye, guys.